Hi there. In this analysis, we were asked to look at Dognition uh, data, which consisted of um, users completing games with their dogs. And what we can see overall is that there's just a drop off, and this was the problem that Dognition had, that the total number of tests was on a just steady decline, um, actually just kind of falling off during the first half of the, of the first 20. Um, so in this analysis, we're gonna we're gonna focus in on these basically the first twenty because after that it becomes a subscription model, um, and we can see that the total number of tests really flatten out uh, at very little, very few. Um, and so the idea is that we want to come up with a few recommendations. And for my analysis, I ended up making a couple of rec recommendations for email reminders or text reminders uh, to help increase the total number of tests completed. Um, as we move through the test or as a user moves through the test. And so digging into the data a little bit, um, we can see that during the first category, what we're looking at here is the total number of tests broken down um, by test number along the uh, x-axis and then grouped by the category. Um, so empathy, communication, and so forth. And what we see is a, is a major drop off, not in the first category, uh, both between the tests and then after the category category um, and we see a similar drop off after each category is completed so one of the things we may want to do is focus these email reminders uh, when somebody has finished a category maybe uh, just urging them to move on and continue some kind of you know outlining the benefits or just kind of selling the next category um, and we can talk a little bit more about that in a bit if we zoom in and get rid of these after 20, so this flat area, then we can see that within a category, even though it is decreasing, it really is between the categories that we want to focus. Um, now, it would be nice to increase what's going on within the category. Um, and to do that, we may want to look at the times at which people are completing the tests so that we can target that at, at an appropriate day and time. And so if we look at the test by days, we can see that throughout the week, uh, there's a there's a drop off as we go through the week. Now, this could just be, you know, people are working, they get tired. Um, so they're not going to spend a lot of time with their dog in the afternoon. So one thing we may consider is maybe midweek, maybe around Wednesday, sending a reminder um, or an email outlining kind of the the psychological benefits of, of playing with dogs. Um, I don't know exactly what they are. I'm not a canine expert. Um, I have to do some research on that, but I, I'm sure I've read some stuff uh, that, that you know, playing with your dog can impre improve your mood, uh, give you some more energy. Um, so focusing on that rather than just completing tests may be beneficial and increase uh, the number of tests that are completed in, in the later part of the week, which then gears them up for the weekend. As far as timing of these things, uh, timing of the emails, if we if we go into each day, we can see that I've, I've highlighted the anything that's greater than seven percent of the daily total. So we can see when people are are making are starting to uh, test, play these games with their dogs, and it makes sense. It's in the afternoon, so after work, starting around three four p.m. on a Monday, and we can see that trend kind of continues. So five p.m. starts, peaks around seven, again. Uh, that is on Wednesday, so, and that's throughout the week. So we're looking at late afternoon. So you may be sending a reminder uh, shortly after lunch or maybe during lunch, you know, hey, today's a great day to play with your dog or move on. Um, and again, I would focus that probably on Wednesdays in order to overcome that dip. And then going into the weekends, we see a spike over Saturday and Sunday with Saturday having the greatest number of tests, which makes sense. That's when people... Most people have a time off and they can play with their dogs and the time of day uh, shifts as well. We see that they're spending more time with their dogs in the morning, um, both on Saturday and Sunday. So on the weekends, that's where we may you may want to target um, both those categorical uh, as well as people that have not logged in in a while. Um, and I would send those reminders early in the morning. Perhaps when they wake up, uh, they can see a reminder. Hey, it's it's a. Uh, it's a great day to go work with your dog, go play with your dog. And in fact, you could even tie that to their weather. So you could look up the local weather for their zip code 
if it's going to be a, a pretty nice day, tie that into it. Hey, it's a nice, going to be a nice day today around 10 o'clock. Have you thought about going out and playing with your dog? And so to summarize, uh, three recommendations. So motivational reminders. The first one would be once somebody has completed a category, maybe a couple days later, then uh, target them and tell them about the next one, give them a preview, outline the benefits, uh, and so forth. That's just to help decrease that drop off between categories. And then a midweek reminder, maybe on Wednesdays, you know, Wednesday around lunchtime or so, uh, reminding the benefits, focusing on the psychological and not necessarily just completing these tests, but rather just playing with your dog. And then thirdly, a weekend reminders in the, in the morning. And again, you could use the user's uh, zip code to look up the local weather. So those are my three recommendations based on data for dog mission.